All right, welcome back to Computer Science for Everyone. Let's try to explain more about blocks. Remember that blocks are classes and methods. Classes. Let's remember our, remind ourselves that classes are the table header that says what properties do we have in all the objects that will come from the class. The class not only defines the properties, but also something that wouldn't be stored in a database, which is the behavior of each object. All objects of the class, although they have different properties, will have the same behavior. Let me explain this with a very funny example. Let's say we have a class called dog. And dog has properties and also some behavior, some actions it can do. And these are going to be methods in our program. Don't worry about this yet. Our properties are going to be age and color. And the actions it can do is bark and eat. OK? So a dog has an age. A dog has a color. So age and color are things that a dog has. A dog can bark and a dog can eat. So barking and eating are things a dog can do. This is why they're actions. So age and color are properties, and they're going to be variables in our program. Bark and eat are actions it can do, and they're going to be methods in our program. Oh, sorry, I pressed one too many. So. Here we have two examples of dog. We have one dog at the top and one at the bottom. They both have an age and a color, although they are different properties. But both of them can bark and eat in pretty much the same way. I don't think different dogs are going to eat differently, although maybe slightly, but they're still going to eat and bark in pretty much the same way, although they might make slightly different noises, but that's it. So. The methods are the actions that a class can have. So they are the actions an object can do, such as bark or eat. So if we were programming it, it would be something like this. We would have a string for the color, which would be the text of the color that the dog has. We've explained what a string is in a previous lecture. So if you don't remember, please go back and check that out. And also an integer for the age. And then we would have two methods. One of them would be bark. And when you run this method, you would get woof out in the screen. And the other one would be eat, which if you run it, would say I'm eating in the screen. So this would be our class. This would be the dog definition. This is not one dog, because we haven't said which color and what age this dog has. However, notice that the actions are already defined. So if we wanted to create a dog object, we'd have to specify what color and what age it would be. Let's not worry about that for now, though. Let's take a look at the methods. Notice how they're public void, and then you've got bark and eat. And they do pretty much the same thing. One of them prints woof, the other one prints I'm eating. But they're both public and void. So what does this mean? Public or private, these are two keywords you can use in your methods. Public or private, public means that other classes can use the method. Private means the opposite, means that no other class except dog can use this method. Why is this useful? We can limit access to protect our classes. We can not only use public and private in methods, but also in variables. So imagine we have a maths class that holds the value of pi. We don't want any other program to go to our class and change the value of pi. So we make it private, so that no one else can change that value. So variables are usually going to be private. We want variables to be private so that we can control access and never have to deal with incorrect values for our variables. If our variables are private, it means that there's no way that the value of our variable is going to be incorrect. So we don't even have to check about it. 
and methods can be public or private, depending on whether they're going to be accessed by other classes or not. In our case, if we have a dog class and we create a dog object, it is likely that if our dog is going to eat or bark, we're going to call or execute those methods from some other part of the program. So those would be private. Sorry, those would be public. However, something else could be private. For example, this code you see at the right. We have a public method called bark. And this bark method barks twice. So we call bark once, one time, and then we call bark once again. And no dog can just bark once, just for the sake of example. They can only bark twice, at least. So bark once is a private method because no one else is going to call it. No one else is going to run this method except this class. So in order to make sure that no dog can bark once, we make bark once private and we call it from within bark. So if we call bark, we bark twice. This is interesting. It means we can protect and prevent our classes from doing things that only the class should be able of doing. If we need to access a variable from another class, we can create a method to give us that value instead of making the variable public. This might seem like a very large workaround, but if we make a variable pri public, other people can modify it. If we make it private and we make a method to give us the value, then no one can modify the variable, but they can get their value. Giving a value back from a method is called returning, and you'll see here what I mean. So our color is a private variable, and it's a string variable. So then, because no one can access that variable, they can't know what color our dog is. So we create a method that is called getColor or any other name. And this returns the color. Remember that color is a variable and it is defined up here. So it returns color. This method is no longer void. This method is now of type string, where string is the same type as our variable. So what happens if we execute this method? What, what do we get? It's not printing anything to the screen. So what we get is the value of the dog's color. This is what returning is and why it's so interesting. This getColor method returns to whoever is executing the method the value of the color of the dog. So what do we know? Classes are the blueprints for objects. Methods are the actions of a class. And they are the actions an object of that class can do whereas variables are the properties of a class and they are the properties of an object of that class. Methods and variables can be public or private and we decide whether they will be public or private depending on whether we want other classes to access them. Methods can give us a value back so we can use it or they can give us no value at all if we make them void. And indeed this depends on the data type of the method. So those void methods you see at the right don't return anything. As you can see, there is no return statement. And if we don't make them void, we have to return something. In this case, because the data type of the method is string, we have to return a string. And in this case, we're returning color, which is defined up here as a string. So I know this could be a bit confusing at first. Try to take another look. And in the next, the very next video, we're going to go into our programming environment and try to make some sense of this. Try to make a dog class or a cat class or something and try to explain anything that you could have a problem with and hopefully that will make everything clear. So stay tuned. Let's go into the next lecture and any doubt you could have will get solved. So I'll see you in the next one.